Hey guys, it's Ted Bogert. Welcome back to the Ted Show. Today is Tuesday, March 29th. Can't believe it's the end of March. Crazy that we're going to be in April at any moment. I am very excited to have this young lady on the show. This is Faye Olga Pappas. I'm just going to say both ways just for kicks and giggles. Uh, Faye is running for judge, circuit judge on August 23rd. Uh, I got to meet her with a dear friend of mine here at Citrus Club. And I'm like, oh my God, I love her energy. I love, you gotta love the necklace. I mean, everything about her. Uh, so I wanted to get to know her and I wanted you all to get to know her. So welcome, Faye, how are you today? Thank you, thank you so much for having me, Ted. It's an honor and a pleasure. It's my pleasure and a thank you for being patient. We had a couple of Wi-Fi issues, never a dull moment here, uh, but I'm very excited for your patience and I'm really excited to learn your journey. So before we went live, we talked about that. The audience loves to know, you know, origin story. You obviously weren't born and then at two years old or three years old said, I want to judge Barbie. Uh, you had a whole career, a whole thought process there. So give us the 411 on you. Well, thank you again, Ted, for having me. And you're right, you don't wake up uh, on your second day after birth and decide you want to be a judge. For me, it has been a journey, a journey that's taken me my entire life. Um, and there's sort of bits and parts of it. And I can tell you that the catalyst, what the event that took me off the bleachers, if you will, and made me realize I had to get in center court was this pandemic. Um, it turned all of our lives around. And for me, it was like my life was like this snow globe, right? So pretty and nice. Then it got turned over. And then once that little fake snow settled to the bottom, I could see again who I really was. And it brought me back to my heart, which has been public service. Now, I, I've been a personal injury attorney now representing the injured against you know, big corporations and the hospital systems doing medical practice and and theme park cases for over a decade. So in my job in the private world, I've always felt that I have been doing as close to a public service as I could just by representing people. But I again- I love that. I've never heard that before, but that's actually amazing because that's what you do. Big yeah. insurance and big everything uh, is really up against, it's hard for the little man, the little woman. Yeah, and the great thing about my job as is, which I love, in fact, I'm actually in my law firm right now, and you may see our staff and attorneys walking back and forth, law firm Bailey Fisher, is we do get to represent people. I'm born and raised in this community. I'm a native Central Floridian and a first-generation American, so I came home to practice law and do personal injury work to take care of my community, take care of my family and my friends. In fact, the majority of my referrals come from people I've known since elementary school, right? Literally my friends and family. So for me, becoming a judge was an extension of that when I realized I needed to do something more um, than represent one person at a time that ultimately the decider in that courtroom can do a lot more good than I can even do here at, at, on just one side of the courtroom, if you will. What's what's fascinating to me is when uh, is this your let me ask you, is this your first foray into uh, running for office? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I <laughs> mean, I think it's always, it's always fascinating to me. And I want to ask you, because I feel mm -hmm. like that is such a leap. And until you make the leap, you can be told all the things that it's going to be and what's going what your challenges are going to be. But then once you take the leap, I have found by interviewing a lot of people that it is even more. And so tell us what it's been like. Was it immediately all limos and furs and travel and all the worldwide glamour? Tell us a little bit about that part. Once you decide and once you announce and once you file, what happened next? Were you surprised? Was it everything you hoped for? Uh, tell us a little bit about that. So. Um, I've actually been planning to run for some two years now. It's sort of like filing is a tip of the iceberg situation. You've got to have your team in place. You have to have your chairs in place. And you, you, you simply find yourself simply waiting for the opportunity. Um, so when I filed, it was actually a relief more than anything else because you've built so much behind you for so long. 
and and you're sort of sitting around asking yourself, will it be today or in two years from now? Judicial elections come in cycles every two years. So in that sense, it was a, a relief. But I will say this, the response has been just absolutely, I mean, I, I was not prepared for it. Um, and I, I'm just so grateful, you know, not here to preach, but I believe strongly in, in God and I believe in the hand of God. And I have I have seen his work um, because that's that's the only way I can explain the response. I mean, I, I filed February 1st and it's just been just been phenomenal. Um, the uh, the endorsements that have come in, the response from my firm and from the community. And I honestly I went to the Keenansville, Florida Swamp Cabbage Festival last Saturday. <laughs> I had just the best time of my life. And I have to tell you, before last week. I didn't know where Keenansville, Florida was, but now I am committed to doing my best to be someone that the people of Keenansville, which is in the far reaches of Osceola County, where, where my circuit would be, will have someone they know and can trust on the bench, God willing. I love it. I love the faith part too. That's amazing. Let, let me ask you, I, one of the things we love to do, or I love to do on the show is educate and I think a lot of people hear judge, circuit judge, court judge. Uh, when I had um, State Attorney Worrell on the show, uh, we had her define what that even means. What does that mean? So give the audience a little bit of knowledge about what a circuit judge actually does. So a circuit judge, in this case, what that circuit is, is all of, of Orange and Osceola County would be what I could hear. It's cases of evaluation, per se, over $30,000. And in the criminal realm, it's felonies. So when we hear those, you know, the felony murder trials, when we hear the big personal injury cases, for instance, my world is 100% circuit court, even divorce cases. That's what you, those judges you see on TV are more likely than not your circuit judge. So really, what we call circuit judge here is often just called trial judge in other states. And in the New York, they have the best title. They're called Supreme Court judges. Ooh, I no, like that. <laughs> I know, I know. But, you know, they're actually just the trial level. But, hey, I like that title. I like the title. I love to educate because I think people get confused when they're when you're running and they're looking at a ballot and they, they just sometimes you see the title and you just don't know. Um, state is attorney. That? State attorney, one thing um, Monique said was, you know, state attorney is like district attorney. And that was such an eye opener for a lot of people. I got so many comments on that, like, oh, now I understand. I think people don't know the roles well enough and how it plays out. So I want to ask you, you talked about making an impact. You already do as a personal injury attorney. How can you make an impact as circuit judge? What is it that you can do? Because you're very, I can tell you're very community oriented. You want to give back. You want to make your community a better place, a stronger place. What is it that a judge can actually do? I think a lot of people think you just sit up there, you judge, and then you go home and you have a great time. But you're actually making decisions that are impacting the people in the community. That's right. Um, as Again, as a trial lawyer, I can tell you having a good judge up there makes all the difference in the world. Um, making sure that as a judge, you not just rule off the cuff, but you actually read both briefs, you prepare the issues, and that allows you to then uh, treat all those who come before you equitably. And what is equity? Equity is not just knowing what the law is, but following it in a way that makes sense, in a way that whoever you are, um, however you live your life, whatever you do, you always know that that judge sitting on that bench doesn't have anything against you so that you know you are on a level playing field when you enter that courtroom just as much as when the person you're up against does too. And that makes all the difference in the world. Agreed. Tell me about the, is it is it still called a campaign? Uh, yeah. We had some questions before we went live. People love to know what that's like. Are you, you already mentioned Keenansville. I love that, the Cabbage Patch or the Cabbage uh, <laughs> Festival. I love that. Is that what campaigning is in the day of social media, in the day of everything is online and God knows there's a camera at every angle. 
Um, are you kissing babies and shaking hands all the time, uh, which is the old political thought process? What's it like? Well, for me, um, I view campaigning as an extension of my education because, listen, I, I can't just be trying to win a race. I view this as me trying to prepare to be a better judge. If God willing, I get voted in. So what that means is getting out and, for instance, I, I'm really trying to meet with our sheriff's offices. And I'm going to give a plug now. The Osceola County Sheriff's Office, they've just opened, they've opened their doors to me. They've allowed me to see what they do. I'm trying to do the same with our state attorney's office and our defense attorneys. I've also been uh, shadowing many of our judges now for two years. Um, in terms, absolutely. Well, listen, I, I do civil work. I do personal injury work. We're going to have, I could be in any discipline. For me, it's about getting an idea of not just the mechanics of the courts, but how can I, if God willing, I get elected, jump in there and be effective in whatever place I, I, I our chief judge decides she wants to put me. Um, but going back to your point, that traditional campaigning, I love that stuff. I love meeting people. I love the fact that Florida, unlike a lot of other states, allows the people to decide who their deciders are going to be. It's so important because when you see a judge, it's going to be a pretty bad day unless you happen to be lucky enough to getting adopted. But everybody else is not going to be having a good day. And so to be able to have some control in that process, to be able to say, I want to make sure we put the best people on the bench who are just you know, going to do their job well, who are going to hear me out, no matter what my problem is, no matter what I'm accused of, will hear me out, treat me with respect and follow the law. That's a big deal. So in addition to hanging out with my fellow lawyers and, and that I really am trying to also meet the stakeholders get a sense. In fact, I'm trying to do a ride along with the Osceola County Sheriff to really get a sense of what it's like to be out there, but also go to as many swamp cabbage festivals that I can <laughs> go to, go to, go to the, the pet Alliance walk, meet, meet people, meet people. We got 1.6 million people between Orange and Osceola County. That's pretty much most of the population of central Florida is right here. And I'm born and raised here. And there are still parts of it, of, of this circuit that I haven't seen. And I'm loving every second of allowing folks to, to set eyes on the person who could be deciding the most important thing in their life. The people of our community deserve that. They deserve to see me and get to know me and have some, some skin in the game. I couldn't agree more. I think one of the thing, one of the blessings of this show is that I get to know uh, the candidates and then obviously the judges and the politicians and the people who do make these decisions. And it's just so wonderful because everybody who comes on, it's, it's, they really do do it. I feel like I haven't had any fake that I can tell yet, but they do it because they love what they do and they want to make an impact. And the first day that I met you here, um, I immediately was like, her energy is so positive. Uh, you can't, fake uh, that kind of authenticity. I don't think you'd have to be a crazy person to do it, but I felt very much like everything you said, authentic, that you cared. There, That is such a needed thing, especially in your position. Of course, in this day and age, it's really needed, but in what you want to be as circuit judge, it's so important. So kudos to you because it was uh, in a meeting, I don't get impressed quickly very often, but I'm like, I like, her. So uh, kudos to you. And I know that's the energy that you give out uh, every time that you go to a Kenansville cabbage patch or you go do whatever it is that you're doing. Tell people, we have a lot of people asking, how do people get involved? How do people learn more about you? What is the best way for them to find you? Well, uh, right now it's opening up Facebook because we are swarming uh, all the residents of Orange and Osceola County on Facebook. Apologies now, I apologize. But truthfully, if I could share my screen, I like to just pop into our the You Facebook. do whatever you'd like to do. All I love right. it. Let's see if I can do this. Share screen. Chrome tab. So this is the 
this. Can we see this, Pappas for Judge Facebook page? I, I'll add it. I'm going to do it right now. All right. There you go. And I'll make it. Uh, there you go. That's what. You can, can see, you it? see it? Yep, we can see it. Yep. The easiest way to follow along is just follow Pappas for Judge um, on Facebook. So there we are, Pappas for Judge. Um, we're happy to get more followers. Again, I'm just, you know, I'm overwhelmed by the positive response in, in just six weeks. Um, as you see, there I was. That's my boyfriend, Ken. We were at the Swamp Cabbage Festival in Keenansville. <laughs> very proud city. Awesome place. That. Um, and as you see, here's my most recent endorsement, my host committee member and mentor, Belvin Perry Jr., uh, my judge, having grown up in Orlando, um, literally as a kid growing up, if I, there was literally only one judge I knew the name of, and that was Judge Belvin Perry. I love I Judge I Perry. He's such a wonderful soul. He's amazing. Yeah. So you can go to pappasfordjudge.com, but you can also, on Facebook, we have tagged uh, all of your social media, and we'll continue to do that and share that. Uh, if you want to, you all, my audience is always looking for ways to get involved and give back and to learn more. So reach out to Faye and her team. This is your opportunity. These are, these, these people want to give back. Someone like Faye wants to do right and good by the community. And so you all are always looking for ways to be introduced. Please reach out to her. She's just as wonderful in person as she is right here on the show. Uh, so get involved, pappasfordjudge.com or follow her on social media that we tag. Uh, Faye, it is Women's History Month and I'm asking every guest uh, the same question. When I say the word hero to you, what woman comes to mind? Well, it's a three-way tie between my mom, my grandmother and my great-grandmother. Um, yeah, so, so long story short, my name is Faye Olga. My name is the two first names of my maternal grandmother and my paternal grandmother. My mother's name is Kiki, but I'll just start from the list as to why I think of these strong women who have been in my life. My, my great grandmother um, uh, survived a Nazi firing squad in World War II, and she had a two-year-old girl underneath her traditional hoop skirt. Um, she kept that girl alive who ended up growing up and now her family is still alive and well in Greece. In fact, they're actually in Greek politics um, and wow. have become doctors and lawyers themselves. Obviously by surviving, my great grandmother eventually created me. But even before then, my grandmother um, uh, you know, kept my father alive during not just the, the World War II, but the Greek Civil War. Um, we, we tend to think of civil wars as being something that's you know not in Europe, not in this you know time frame, but we forget that after World War II, Greece was actually the first proxy battle of the Cold War, and the country was plunged into a horrific decade-long civil war. Um, that's part of the origin story of how my family came here, um, and then and then after that, after they got out of the civil war. Um, their fledgling democratic government was overthrown by their military in 1967. So that takes us to my mom because uh, my mom ended up leaving everything behind um, about four months after the, the coup occurred to try her luck and her family to try their luck in the United States. Oh, so wow. just imagine leaving everything behind, everything. We're seeing that now in other parts of the world. We're seeing that now happen uh, in Ukraine, we've seen it across folks from Syria before. I mean, you know, it, 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 it you know, why history it tends to repeat itself, I know, but um, there is nothing like this country that's just, it's given us the opportunity we would never have. And so people ask me why you want to be a judge. Why were you interested in public service? Duh. I, I, have, <laughs> I have so much to be thankful for. Uh, and give back. I mean, my father, uh, after September 11th, joined the Coast Guard Auxiliary and became a flotilla commander. This man who's a naturalized citizen for English is not his first language, said, I'm going to basically give myself a second full time job of trying to give back. Um, you know, I, you know, my family history is one to where we have seen firsthand what happens when the rule of law breaks down. 
And it does take crises to, to show us what can happen. And for me, that crisis uh, was the pandemic and recognizing everything can change in a heartbeat. I, I've got to get in there to do what I can to help us keep that rule of law together, to help us keep these, these horror stories, just that, horror stories that happen in far off lands to keep this country the place of opportunity and promise. Where else are we going to go, Mars? <laughs> Correct. You are a joy. I love your story. I love that story. I always get moved to that one, especially moving because of your great grandmother, grandmother and mom. I think it's just amazing. I love that you shared it with that passion. You all need to get involved. Reach out to Faye and her team. Um, reach out to her. She is, again, just as warm and loving as and open as you see her on this show. I can say that firsthand uh, from experiencing it. Thank you so much. Pappasfordjudge.com. Go to social media. Find her. Get involved. The uh, election is August 23rd. So we still have several months, but you know it goes fast and we yep. want you to get involved, <clears throat> excuse me, and give back and and figure out how you too can make an impact with Faye and her team. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Amazing. Sorry, I got choked up. That's why I'm getting all choked up. Um, Thank you so much for having me. All right, you guys get involved. Pappasfortjudge.com. We'll see you soon, everybody.